All right, so we're going to discuss compost tea, and then after uh, this discussion, we'll go outside, check out the Johnson Sioux bioreactor, and then we're going to take a look at the brewer out here and have a discussion there, and then check out the microscope, or at least check out some slides for microscope, and I can go over a little bit about uh, how to use the microscope. And there's also been just some discussion of maybe having a future class on just microscope stuff, if you guys are interested in that. So compost tea, everything you need to know to set up, brew, and apply. So we're going to talk about what is compost tea and what is not compost tea. Why to use compost tea. Setting up a brewer for any scale. How to brew compost tea. And then application methods for ap applying compost tea. What is compost tea? Uh, the very basic explanation is that it's a liquid form of compost. The idea behind compost tea is that, and all of this is the microbes and the action of the microbes, so what is actually working with compost tea is that we're getting those microorganisms out into the liquid and able to use that uh, liquid to inoculate plants and soils with beneficial microbiology. So compost tea uses finished compost. If you use anything other than finished compost, you have to call it what you use. So if you use manure, that's manure tea, that's not compost tea. If you put soil in there, that's not compost tea, that's soil tea. And then there's the tea versus extract. So compost extract is when you take a container, and we're going to be going into the detail more in a second. You put compost into a mesh bag, you put that into water, and you agitate it, and you're extracting those microorganisms from the surfaces of the organic matter into the water. So if you have, a, say, a population of 1,000 microbes on these surfaces, you're trying to extract 1,000 microbes into the water, and then you're only having those 1,000 microbes to work with. You can then take that and dilute it down and spray it out over your soils. Uh, extracts are best for soils. But you have to realize that you only have the population of what you have extracted. Now, compost tea is doing the same exact thing. You're putting organic matter compost in a bag, mesh bag, agitating it in water. But then you're adding foods for microbes. And the idea is that you're adding foods to get the microbes to eat and reproduce, eat and reproduce, eat and reproduce, to turn those 1, 000, that population of 1,000 into trillions. And so you're expanding the population. Through that expanse of population, as I was saying before, bacteria and fungi use enzymes and acids and glues to eat away at materials. And those glues come out through the reproduction when you're making tea and it helps biology stick to plant surfaces better. So compost tea is better for a foliar application, whereas compost extract is good for a soil application or soil drench. If you were in, in immediate need of some type of liquid application of compost, you might not have time to wait around to brew for one to three days and you need something immediately, you can make compost extract in five minutes and have it ready to go. So it's much quicker. You're just not getting that expanse of population. So leachate is what comes out of a pile or bin that the liquid that would leach out of the bottom of a pile, compost pile, or a worm bin. It is not compost tea. This is what I was explaining before that a lot of people who don't necessarily pre-compost their material, they'll you know, throw an apple peel in and a piece of carrot and some rice and spinach and whatever they had for lunch into their worm bin and then allow that, the microorganisms to break that down and the worms to come in and eat that. But if you were to have something that would have something that's detrimental either to humans or to plants and you put that in there, and then you're continuing to feed the top. The worms are going to break that down over time. And once you get finished worm compost, because of the actions of the worms and the biology within them, you will have gotten rid of pathogens. You should have gotten rid of pathogens. But before microbes have broken some of that stuff down, you have the potential that there's a pathogen for humans or plants. And if you were to be watering your bin and having that water leach through and touching the pathogens and grabbing onto them and it moves down, then you could be using that stuff and it's very questionable. It's, it's a mystery substance and you don't know what's in there. So it could be good and it could be bad and it's just not a chance that you really want to be taking 
if you're trying to grow food or eating that food. But what are you supposed to do with it? Toss it, throw it on weeds, or get rid of, put it on something you don't want. <laughs> okay. Treat it like manure. Treat it like manure, yeah. Give it to cover crops or something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Put it on something that you don't aren't necessarily going to eat or are caring about the health of. Tom Ski said to use it if you want to attract new breeding female black soldier flies. Oh yeah, no, it's great. It's great for making soldier flies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the question was, she has her worm, her composting worms in the soil, and she was asking about taking what part she should use. Um, how deep is the? Uh, so she's saying the depth is about that big. Um, well, your finished material is most likely going to be on the bottom, and you want to be getting to the finished material. And that's what creates an issue when you're worm composting and you use a system like that, is that you have to usually kind of take everything out and sort through it or try and get that stuff from the bottom where your worms are going to be mainly on the top. So I mean, it depends on your starting materials, and it kind of depends on your management style. But you're most likely going to be wanting to take stuff from the bottom of that, if I'm understanding, correctly, understanding you correctly. So why use compost tea? If you have a compost pile that's this big and you have 100 acres to cover, it's going to be really hard to put one ton of compost or you know, this big a pile of compost over 100 acres you know, or even 10 acres. But you can take a small amount of that compost and make compost tea out of it and get the same benefits onto your land through the biology. Um, most times when you are trying to get biology into the soil, most soils that I'm testing with a microscope are lacking organic matter. Uh, so it would be more beneficial to use compost on a system like that. But if you are on land like that, but if for some reason you couldn't spend the money, um, this is a more efficient way of getting biology out onto your soils and lands and crops. Plus you can't have, you don't, when you have plants, you can't, do a fuller application of compost on plants without dumping compost onto a plant and burying the plant. So you can get the beneficial biology onto the foliar surfaces of plants through compost teas. Uh, also, the energy that you're going to spend putting out compost, you're going to be having to use more equipment and more heavier equipment to put out compost than you are to have a sprayer and to be able to apply compost teas. And I think that's all I have to cover with that. So setting up a brewer, we were doing research at Rodale with five gallons per acre, which if you can think about five gallon jugs and putting that onto an acre of land, that's really a minimal amount. So it really doesn't take much to use. You really don't have to brew, you know, like hundreds of gallons at a time, especially if you don't have really much land. So it really doesn't take much to brew. The materials needed for brewing are a clean container. And you always want to make sure and clean your material after you brew. Water, water quality is important as well. You want good quality water. Uh, it's good to use rain water that hasn't been sitting around too long if you can. Uh, if you're using chlorinated water, then there's ways to treat that, but we'll be getting that in a second here. You need finished compost or vermicast, a brew bag, and then if you're not doing an extract, but if you're doing a tea, you're going to need an air pump or an air blower and a hose to hook those up to. And we'll see examples of all these. And then you need foods for microbes. And we're going to be getting into the details of all this. So an easy and cheap and expensive three to five gallon brewer, which I call brewing on a budget. You can go to your local grocery store and go to the bakery. And the bakery uses uh, frostings that they get in in little three to five gallon buckets. And you can ask for them for free. And they'll either be clean or dirty. Either way, you're getting it for free. So you can get a free bucket. That way, you don't even have to spend any money on a bucket. Otherwise, five gallon buckets really aren't that expensive. Then you can go to Sherwin-Williams or Benjamin Moore and get a five gallon paint strainer bag. So this is a elastic top. Uh, paint strainer bag and it works perfectly to take a five gallon bucket and put it in here and put your elastic around the top and then it's not dropping into your bucket. These cost 
less than $3 or less, so it's really not very much money for those. And then for making tea, the most money you're gonna spend is on a aquarium pump. And you can get these for $20 to $40. It should be $20 $25 in a, a store that sells aquarium equipment or a hydroponics supply store will also carry air pumps like this. Um, we're gonna get into the details about this more, but you always want your air to be flowing up through the entire column of water. So you want the air to be blowing up from the bottom. And when you've got these plastic tubes, they float. And so when you put it in the water, they're gonna float at the top and you gotta have a way to keep those on the bottom. The best and most inexpensive way through my composting experience, I have lots of silverware that comes through the compost and I take forks and I use the, tar the tines on the forks and I'll, I'll put one fork on those two and I'll put one fork on those two and then I can dump them in there and those forks are keeping this at the bottom of the tank and then the air is gonna be traveling up through the entire column of water. They're really easy to clean. They're not expensive to have to deal with. So that's an easy three to five gallon brewer. And the last time I gave this presentation, I didn't have uh, visual aids. So this is my picture of the same exact stuff. This is a 50 gallon brewer. I, we're gonna be seeing a nice conical brewer in the greenhouse here. And I would love to have a conical brewer like that. I just don't have the money to spend on one of those or to set one up. So I have set this rig up right here. You can get a food grade 55 gallon plastic barrel. Normally for like 10 to $20 you can purchase those for. And then I've got PVC right here. And so, uh, this is the best way I've, coming, I've come up with, uh, I don't have my pump on, my other pump on me, but again, you're wanting, this is my air pump and it's got a braided hose there that I want to go all the way to the bottom of that. So the best way I've come up with doing this is to feed that hose down through this PVC so that the, the hose sticks all the way down to the bottom and then the air is coming out the very bottom. And then I made these cross section pieces so that it stabilizes that in place and it's keeping it in the very center of the brewer there and it's gonna be coming out and helping to push air in all directions. So you've got 55 gallon food grade barrel, PVC. Let's see if I've got a size. If you guys wanna set this up, it is I don't have the size of PVC on there, but it's 3 8 inch, inch braided air hose. The air pump is a 60 liter per minute pump, and you can get those for 40 to $45. So this is, we're gonna be seeing a conical brewer like this in the greenhouse. This is at Rodale. These were donated by Dirt Simple. This is a 15 gallon brewer. This is a 100 gallon brewer. The air pump gets hooked up down here at the outlet. So what's great about these is that you're using the same outlet for pushing air in as in emptying your tank. So you want, this one's built on a platform so that we can gravity feed out into the tank that we're gonna be using for transport. Uh, another thing you wanna take into consideration if you're not into hydroponics and things like that, the number one rule with that stuff is to keep your electricity above your water and you wanna keep your pumps above your, and electricity stuff above your tanks. If I've got this air hooked up to this uh, in the bucket here and the power goes out on the pump here and this is lower than this, there's a chance that it could gravity feed back through the air pump and ruin your air pump. I believe that in there, do you guys have a backflow prevent? Okay, yeah, they've, so they've got a check valve in here that prevents this from happening. Otherwise, you take the risk of if your electricity goes out, which has happened with this thing on me, the electricity went out, and if you don't, if you don't have your pump higher than your air, then you're, you're taking the chance of, that's a $750 blower that's hooked onto this, so you, you're gonna lose a $750 blower. But you can take The way that they did this is kind of neat. I mean, it's super simple and uh, it comes out, it loops up over, this is a outlet, it loops up over the tank and then comes back down to the blower. So if the electricity were to ever go out, the water is just gonna go back out this tube and go as high as it is in this tank, if that makes sense to y'all. 
Otherwise, like I said, they've got a black back flow preventer in there or keep your pump up above the water. What's great about this design is that you're getting your air up through the entire column of water and because of the conical design, there's not really any dead spots in here and that's, can, that can be a concern like with, I've never had it happen in my brewer, but you might have some little dead pockets where there's corners at the bottom that aren't necessarily getting air while you're brewing, where this guarantees that you're getting a nice flow of air through the entire column. And then brew bags, I did not bring a larger size brew bag with me. Um, there are different companies that make brew bags. My favorite one, I've used a few different kinds. My favorite one comes from Earthfort. It's the company's Earth Fortification, but uh, their website is earthfort.com. It's right up here on the screen. This one is the medium size bag that they have. This one is the large size bag that they have. Uh, I like these a lot. They're very strong. I can use them for years. If they ever do happen to get a hole like from a stick puncturing them or something like that from the compost, it's easy to take um, fishing line and a needle and thread your needle with fishing line and use that fishing line to sew up the holes and it fixes it right away. To make compost tea, you could just take a bucket and put compost in there and put water in there and then strain it on the way out. The issue comes when you're using big brewers like this and lots of amounts of water is that it gets hard to strain all that stuff out so you want to keep it in a bag so that it's much easier to clean up in the end. Otherwise you're dealing with a bunch of little chunks that you're trying to either fish out or, or strain out. So I actually, just because I didn't have a, a sock to put it in one time, tried um, putting it just in there and trying to get the air to, to bubble through it, but the air doesn't, wants to go up, it doesn't spread out. So unless you have a whole diffuser on the bottom, it doesn't really work to put the compost in there without a bucket, without a sock. Yeah. Because you don't get, you end up getting anaerobic compost from the bottom. That makes sense. He was saying that if you don't use a bag, chunks from the compost are going to mess up your airflow throughout the water and you're going to get anaerobic sections where the compost is just sitting there in the water.